Frank DeFord's words recall the Civil War, when people gathered with picnic blankets to watch battles at Bull Run and Manassas. In 1882, the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, adopted football as an important part of military education, where football turned out to be a great diversion for sailors, keeping them out of trouble, and helping build teamwork. There has always been a connection between the two. Nowadays, football is bigger than sport. It's a way of life. So who better to talk to us than Keenan Reynolds? Recently drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, NCAA record-breaking quarterback, he is the perfect guy to shed some light on the experience of sport, service, and what it means to persevere. I mean, it's, it's kind of everything wrapped into one. Um, and I figured I just wanted to make that decision based off of you know, down the road when I'm you know, well into my adult life, not necessarily how I felt when I was 18, 19. So it wasn't necessarily an education plan or a college plan, it was a life plan for you? Absolutely. I made the decision uh, as an investment uh, for the old Keenan. Right, 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 I get you. People tend to think of the military service in distinctively specific ways, some that are remarkably similar to how they think about football. Keenan seems to have always displayed the ways of an officer from very early on. Uh, my first interaction with Keenan came when he came to us uh, right before, or during the summer of his, uh, before he became a freshman in high school. Within about two weeks, you realize this young man was very special. And within about two to three weeks, uh, he had taken over as our quarterback as a freshman, which we had never started a freshman quarterback ever. Uh, in terms of his discipline, his work ethic, what he wanted, he knew what he wanted, and he knew what he wanted and how he wanted to be successful and what it was going to take, and he, he just transitioned right through that, I think, very easily. For the special few who earn the right to play for a military academy, the road to greatness is paved. Paved with hard work, determination, leadership, and the ability to adapt and overcome. You know, being from former military myself, I know that it, it trains you a certain way to put you in a situation that you can, you know, operate under stress. You know, so that prepares you for further on in life, post-military, post-college, post-stuff like that. Did that have any effect on you? I mean, did it work that way for you? Um, you know, I think that it forces you to balance. I don't necessarily think it kind of teaches you. I think it forces you. And, and what I mean by that is just that you have, no, you have no other choice. You have to keep your grades right. You have to be sat in, a, in your military obligations. And then you have to come out and perform on, on Saturdays and every day during the week and practice. And if you can't do that and you can't play, you can't do that, you won't be in the Naval Academy very long. So um, very quickly you learn how to adapt. The Naval Academy is a four-year co-educational federal service academy. It educates officers mostly to join the United States Navy and Marine Corps, as well as housing a football program that Keenan, simply put, was a natural fit for. I, I knew he was a good player. I didn't know he was this good. I mean, to me, he's one of the great football players that have ever played college football. He's done things here at the Naval Academy that's never been done, done before in college football. I mean, he's scored more touchdowns than anybody that's ever played. I mean, that's, I mean, that's unbelievable. You know, to think of the thousands and thousands of guys that played, he scored more touchdowns than anybody. It's, it, he had a, quite a remarkable career. Well, he, he's always been, again, a dedicated person. In every interview, you know, that he had leading up to, you know, the end of his career, People were asking him about it. I remember Jim Rome asked him about, you know, Keenan, if you can have the perfect ending to your career, you know, uh, what would it be? Uh, go to the Heisman Trophy ceremony and uh, go to the NFL. He said, no, said, my, my ending would be serve my country. Because that's why I came here. This was the best opportunity, you know, to, to be able to play Division I football. But he knew in the end, the end product would be serve my country. And that's, he was prepared to do that. At this time, two seasons ago, Reynolds was surging toward the conclusion of one of the most decorated careers in Navy history. 88 career touchdowns, 4,559 career rushing yards. He set school records in points, touchdown passes, and wins. He capped his career by finishing fifth in Heisman Trophy voting. That's a top honor in college football. For an athlete and his family, waiting to hear your name called during the draft can be torture. Hours upon hours of waiting, hoping, praying for your phone to ring and hear your name called. 181 names came and went, and then... With the 182nd pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Keenan Reynolds 
Wide receiver from Navy. It was insane. It, you know, we had been waiting for hours, which we knew that's part of it. You wait. And then his phone buzzed and he answered and he's like, how you doing coach? And you know, I knew then, you know, that this was it. This was the call we were waiting for. And then, you know, he finished up his conversation, what was talking to them. And then he set the phone down and he said, I'm going to be a Raven, y'all. And then everybody just literally went crazy at that point. Like, you, you've now made it. This is, this is big time. I mean, it, it's, it's NFL right in the corner. This is ESPN. We're, we're, we're at a stage now that I can imagine you thought of growing up in your room for all those years that this was something that you could get to. But when did this, this, this is now not a dream anymore. This is reality. I mean, what, give me that. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said it's something I dreamed about ever since I was a little boy, uh, when I first put look, on the pads. Look, I mean, <laughs> we got like 50 people in there. <laughs> it's a lot of family the and whole friends. whole squad. A lot of Just family right and there. friends, yeah. It's, I mean, I mean, you're, you're on the phone, I'm assuming you're on the phone with Harbaugh at that point, or uh, uh, coach? Mr. Okay, okay, but you're talking to the GM of a professional football team. And lo and behold, it's in the same place you've been going to school, right. you know, so you're staying local. Right, right. I mean, give me that. What's the 401 on that? Uh, I, uh, I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to Really? I didn't think I was going to go there. <laughs> um, you know, I thought somebody would pick me up, but I didn't think it would be them. So it was just everything kind of worked together the way it was supposed to. It was very, very blessed and fortunate that, mm -hmm. it, that it worked that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, dream come true at that moment. And it was just kind of like, wow, this is actually happening right now. And then graduation day. An amazing day that changed the landscape for his entire career moving forward. After a special comment from and a guest speaker. Rhodes and Mitchell and Truman scholarships, three gate scholarships, and even a sixth round selection in the NFL draft. And on that last one, on that last one, Keenan and Chris, you're cleared and approved to defer your service so you can pursue your NFL dreams. Go get them. I think so I'm sitting there, you know, it's hot. And I'm like, we're watching the speech. And, the <laughs> and then I heard my name and Chris Wayne's name. And I was like, I kind of perked up like, what, what's he doing? And then he's like, you guys are clear in front of all my classmates in front of the entire uh, stadium, you know, 20,000 or so people, and I was just like, wow, blown away. That, From everybody. That it, that it would just kind of come out right then and there. I mean, I thought that was pretty awesome. A small town Tennessee kid to a newly drafted Baltimore Raven professional football player. Nevertheless, talking to Keenan, it's about preparing for the next step. Okay. So you're playing professional football now. Mm hmm. You are also still in a reserve component serving in the military. Mm hmm. So it's kind of as if you're a superhero. <laughs> you have an alter alias, and you're doing a day job. And except you're not fighting crime at night, you're serving your country. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? That's a blessing. I mean, it's two, two things uh, that, you know, I, I love to do. I love to be able to serve my country. I love to be able to play professionally at, uh, in, in the NFL. So, you know, it's, it's just kind of like the best of both worlds, aren't we? But what about the position change? Is that, is that something that you're worried about? Not really worried about it. I know it's tough. It's tough going through it. Right, uh, right. Actively going through it. And it's, it's definitely a struggle, but at the same time, it's just yet another challenge that uh, I have to overcome. And uh, since you haven't thrown it around in a while, I figured we could do a throwing contest, see so we still got it. Uh, I still got it. You sure I, about I that? haven't thrown it in a while, but okay. I still got it. All right, it. we're gonna go over here and try that out. All right. You know, the amazing thing about filming through their eyes is the experiences. Getting a glimpse of how each individual service member and veteran walked, talked, and moved through their wonderful, amazing lives. It's a real education on what it means to serve from so many different perspectives.
See, the I first did, snap, and then there's the second snap. Make see, sure you I get it right. Did, I just did one. Uh, well, it'd be so, like, so it'd be like, so oh. like it would just be just straight into it, like, uh, yeah. Okay.